good evening. Hello, Blue Hens. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we'll be covering navigating food allergies and dietary restrictions on campus for fall of 2023. My name is Debbie Miller. I am the registered dietitian with Dining Services here at the University of Delaware. My contact information is below my phone number and email address, but that will also be on the last slide and um, to be captured at that point in time. Uh, for those of you who have any questions, there is a question answer uh, box and if you can please submit those um, at that in the box that would be great and we'll also have a question and answer session um, at the end so if we can go to the next slide please all righty so dining services goal for students who have uh, food allergies and our dietary restrictions is to uh, provide students with tools and support they need to manage 
uh, their restrictions. Um, our team will work with students to enable them to dine safely with us, which is extremely important to us and a high priority, and to also be active in the management of their food allergies and dietary restrictions. Uh, we do take into account um, students' personal dietary needs and help them find the food that fits their lifestyle. So that we have a program uh, that we have developed. Um, if any dietary needs fall outside of our program, uh, we will take a look at them and provide accommodations. Okay, on to the next slide. So one of the main tools we have for students with food allergies and gluten intolerances is a true balance station. So this is designed, as I said, specifically for guests with food allergies and gluten intolerances. Um, the station eliminates uh, the top nine allergens and gluten. Uh, the true balance is available at Cesar Rodney Dining Hall, which is on Central Campus, as well as Pinnacator Dining Hall, which is on Lair Campus. So no matter where, uh, a student is living on campus, they will have very easy access to the True Balance station. Um, the station is open for brunch, lunch, and dinner. So to the next slide. So some of the safety precautions we take with this particular program is that we do have recipes that are especially selected, reviewed, and vetted by our culinary experts. Uh, the equipment and storage is dedicated for True Balance use only. The products, um, have or use ingredients that exclude the top nine allergens as well as gluten. Uh, we have a very specific key ingredient list that we use. Uh, those manufacturers have um, confirmed that their product is free of the allergens as well as gluten. And if we do receive a food substitute through our um, distributors, uh, we don't use any food substitutes. We would make a menu adjustment. So we're not substituting products and are, you know, changing any of the recipes that we are preparing. Uh, the station is monitored very closely on a daily basis by our managers, and the station is also audited regularly to make sure that we're complying with the strict guidelines set up for this particular station. And our employees who work at that station also receive specialized training before they're permitted to work at the station. Next slide. The other tool we have um, is custom meal preparation. So custom meals are available to accommodate guests with additional allergies, any allergies that fall outside of the parameters of the True Balance Station, as well um, additional intolerances and other dietary restrictions. If a student is receiving a custom meal, we do ask that uh, we have medical document documentation from their physician. And it doesn't have to be a big long letter of explanation. We really just need the diagnosis and or the diet prescription. Um, and the custom meals are available at all three of our dining halls, Penn Cater, Russell Dining Hall, and Caesar Robin Dining Hall for all meals, so breakfast, lunch, dinner, and brunch. Okay, moving on. So just to give you an idea of what other dietary restrictions entails, um, and this is not an all-inclusive list. Uh, we do have students with gastrointestinal issues, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, IBS. We have students um, with some cardiovascular issues, so if they need low sodium, low fat, we can accommodate that. We have some students who are insulin-dependent uh, uh, diabetic, so we have carbohydrate information available. Uh, we have a couple of students with EOE, um, Right now, we don't have any students with PKU, but we have had them in the past, and we will bring in special products for that particular diagnosis. Uh, students with eating disorders, food sensory uh, disorders, and uh, though this is not a medical issue, we do provide accommodations for students who have religious restrictions with their diet. Okay, on to the next slide. So back to customer meal preparation. Uh, when we are making these meals, they are prepared in a separate area. So they are prepared taking necessary precautions to avoid cross contact for guests with allergies, intolerances, or other dietary restrictions. The area is cleaned and sanitized, uh, fresh cutting board, fresh knives, separate pots and pans. All of that is used to make sure that these meals are prepared uh, in compliance with what the student needs. Um, Again, individual, individual diagnosis and restrictions will be taken into consideration for each student. Um, and if students are on a gluten-free diet, we do provide a, um, additional gluten solution options. Uh, a gluten um, solution menu goes out every week, which we'll see in a little bit with additional options. And we do have a variety of specialty products like pizza crust, pasta, bagels, 
breads, waffles, cookies, and more available for students who require uh, those products. Okay, moving on. So this is an example of the gluten solution menu. Again, it's sent out weekly. Uh, so if anybody listening tonight is on a gluten-free diet, if you could definitely contact me if you have not already. So I have your name and your email address. Uh, every Friday, you receive a copy of the gluten-free menu or gluten solution menu for all three dining halls. Uh, for the two dining halls that have True Balance, it will um, list what is available for True Balance, what the menu options are. If you like the menu options at True Balance, you don't need to place a custom meal order. That food will be ready and available for you when you walk in the dining hall. If you don't like or you are allergic to anything um, that we're serving, maybe you're allergic to orange or mustard in the barbecue sauce, uh, we can do uh, custom meal selections from them um, from below. So there's usually two additional entrees listed, uh, with some additional vegetables. We do a fresh garden salad or we can do a custom salad, uh, fresh fruit, gluten-free cookies. We have brownies. Uh, for brunch, we have uh, blueberry muffins. So there's a lot of options. This menu also can be modified a lot. So students um, have an option, for example, with the pizza to get it on a, on a gluten-free pizza crust or to get it on a gluten-free vegan cauliflower pizza crust. And they can have it cheeseless or they can have it with vegan cheese. So that's just an example of how some of these menu selections can be further modified uh, for our students. Okay, moving on. So this is what the custom meal um, request form looks like. It is not available online uh, on our website. I do send it out to students individually. Uh, we only want students who have dietary restrictions for medical reasons to have access to this form or for religious reasons to have access to this form. So they would simply put in their name, their phone number, the day of the week, the date, and what their diet restrictions are. And they will fill out, fill out each uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, what time they're going to be arriving. We'll make their food close to the, as close to that time as possible and the dining hall that they're eating at. So that could be important if a student's living on Laird campus, on North campus, and they wanna eat at Penn Cater, but then they're gonna be on main campus for lunch and they may wanna eat at Caesar Rodney. They may go back up to North campus for dinner and they wanna eat at Penn Cater again. So, um, you know, they can submit one form for multiple meals. And again, letting us know what time they're arriving and we'll have that cooked fresh and ready for them. Okay, next slide. So the process for the custom meal preparation is that the student would complete the form using our online menu. So if the student has food allergies, they can look at our online menu and see what we're, what we're preparing and make selections from that menu. Um, and again, you'll see in a little bit that that menu will include ingredients and allergens so students can make smart decisions um, or they can make some fun some selections from the gluten solution menu if they're restricting gluten in their diet. Um, they would submit that form via email to the dining hall of their choice. Uh, we do ask that that be submitted uh, before 6 a.m. on the day that they want their meal. So a lot of students will submit that usually before they go to bed. I can tell because they come in at like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Um, so once they are submitted, our opening manager will um, receive and confirm uh, with the students that we have received their order. If there's any issues with the order, we'll let the students know at that point in time that there might be an issue. Uh, occasionally, we'll have someone looking at the pin cater menu and ordering that food from Rodney and it's not available at Rodney. So we'll just let the students know um, if there's some kind of mix up like that so that they can reorder. Uh, when they do arrive in the dining hall, they would uh, speak to a manager and um, their meal will be retrieved um, it won't take them very long to get into a real easy routine with knowing where to go and, and who to talk to as far as picking up their meal. Um, and then we do ask if a student needs to cancel their order, if they can let us know as soon as possible, uh, ideally before we've made the food. Uh, but again, if they can let us know. The opposite is true if the student has a change in plans and perhaps they were not planning to come to the dining hall um, and suddenly they do need a meal in the dining hall. We can take some orders the same day if we, you know, as much notice as possible would be appreciated. Uh, but we're not gonna let anyone starve. So if a student submits, you know, a dinner menu at, you know, 11 o'clock in the afternoon, we will definitely print that out and um, prepare that food for the students. Getting the orders at 6 a.m. allows us to pull the food 
uh, that we need maybe before there's a marinade put on with an allergen or gluten, before there's breading, um, you know, before something is, you know, seasoning is put on that the students can't have. So we can pull all of their food first thing in the morning to make sure that we have what they need um, for their meals. Okay, next. So this is an example of the online menus, and this is the email address. Uh, also, when the students walk into the dining hall, there is a QR code available that they can scan and pull up the menu on their phone. So they can either look at the menus in advance. If they're doing a custom meal order, that would be their best you know, uh, selection the night before. Um, or if they just want to look at information once they enter the dining hall, they can do that at that point in time as well. So this is just one of our stations. It's our classic station it's serving turkey with garlic scallion gravy. The calories are listed along with the description. Uh, there's a vegan item, a starch, and mashed potatoes, Italian roasted vegetables. It tells the students there's zucchini, onions, carrots, garlic, and Italian seasoning, and um, mints and peas. So that is a general overview of the menu and what's available. There are icons there saying if it's an eat well selection, a vegan selection, a plant forward selection. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, the plant forward in a, in a bit. But um, so this is what they'll see on initial, you know, clicking into the menu. Next slide. So they can also um, access additional information. So this is the mashed red skin potatoes from the previous page. Um, it gives the portion size, and so that they click in, they'll get the 11 nutrients that are required by national menu labeling. It has calories, fat, total fat, saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, sodium, carbohydrates, and protein. So again, if someone is following um, a diet and needs to track their carbs uh, for insulin, that information is there. If they need to track the sodium or the cholesterol, that information is there. There's also an ingredient and uh, allergen statement for students who need to see what other ingredients may be included uh, in this particular dish. So um, obviously the mashed potatoes do contain milk. If somebody is allergic to milk or has a lactose intolerant, they could do a custom meal order and order a baked potato because we purchased them, they're in house, and it'd be really um, a simple thing to, to make that potato for that student. Okay, next. So uh, we did make a change last semester. The recipes that we're serving in the dining halls do not contain nuts and peanuts. Um, they've been taken off of the menu. Uh, we are not claiming to be peanut and tree nut free in the dining halls. However, uh, we do still provide individually packaged peanut butter and almond milk for students who need that or want that. Uh, we have not eliminated recipes that contain coconut. Uh, those recipes are still served. And uh, we do have some ingredients that have the uh, may contain or processed in statements. Uh, so again, in general, the peanuts and tree nuts have been, recipes have been taken off of the menu, uh, but we are not peanut and tree nut free per se. Next. Okay, so it's additional tools that we have for students on campus, uh, and this is new for fall semester. Cesar Rodney and Russell Dining Hall will have digital menu boards at each station. Uh, they will look much nicer than the picture I have here, but um, the menu boards will include the recipe name and the description and the calorie contents, um, as you saw on the online menu. Uh, the icons will be there as well to identify if they're vegan, vegetarian, whole grain. Um, and then additional nutrition information will be available upon request. So the students can either link into our online menus to get that information, uh, but we will also have a, a hard printed copy of that information for them uh, should they want to access it that way. All right, next. So uh, Pencater Dining Hall will still have uh, the nutrition ID cards out on the service line, and this is what they look like. Um, it lists the 10 required nutrients from national menu labeling. Uh, they have the icons available. And again, it's the name, the calories, a description, um, along with all of that um, nutrition information that we need to provide. So, Next. At the True Balance Station, the nutrition ID cards are a little bit different. Uh, we do provide the ingredients on the cards as well as uh, the website. And so if the student um, has not accessed the website, they can look through and identify um, any kinds of additional 
allergens. Uh, we have a student here who's allergic to pepper, so the Tabasco sauce would be important for that student to see. Uh, we have some students allergic to apples, and so that might be an important um, you know, thing for that student to be able to see. Um, the, the chicken, the Caribbean jerk chicken, it has the uh, red pepper in it. Again, if someone's allergic to pepper, that also um, would be visible at that point in time. And then the additional nutrition information is available on request as well. Okay, next slide. So now I've been referring to additional nutrition information being available. So this is part of the national, national menu labeling law. Uh, most of the items that we're serving that we're preparing with recipe will have the nutrition information either on the digital menu board or on the nutrition card. Um, but there are some items that we don't have a, a thousand cards everywhere for. So uh, things like beverages, salad bar items, condiments and toppings, uh, the total calories will be posted, but we do have additional nutrition information available for those items as well. So I, I've gotten a question several times from students um, who are insulin dependent diabetic on the cappuccino, wanting to know how much, uh, how many carbs are in that so they know how to adjust their insulin dosage. Uh, so that information is available. Um, and it includes the um, 10 required nutrients, the fat, saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, sodium, total carbs, uh, dietary fiber, sugar, and protein. Uh, we also have a binder at each location that has all of this information. Uh, so the students can request to look at the binder. If they want to look at, you know, sit down one day and just kind of look through the binder to pull out information they're interested in, they can do that as well. Okay, next slide. So uh, this is some, some general safety recommendations. Um, the safest way to dine in the dining hall if you have a food allergy or an intolerance is to make your selection from the True Balance station. If your allergens and intolerances are encompassed within the True Balance parameters. So if it's the top nine allergens and gluten, uh, that would be your safest way to eat on campus or to do a custom meal order because we take a lot of precautions in preparing those meals. Um, Regular recipes that are prepared in our kitchen may come in contact with common food allergens during preparation and service. Uh, so we do recommend that students uh, not look at the um, ingredient statements online to avoid allergens. And a, an example could be uh, roast turkey is not gonna have any of the top nine allergens, but if it, if it is on our home zone station, it may be sitting next to bread dressing, which is gonna have wheat and egg and milk. It may be sitting next to our gravy, which is going to have wheat and milk. Uh, and so there is a great chance of cross contact. So those items can be ordered. The roast turkey can be ordered as part of a custom meal order. And that would be prepared in a safe area for the students. Um, the may contained and processed in statements uh, that we do post online do not drop to the very bottom of the ingredient statements that we are posting. They might be listed kind of within the body of the ingredient statements. So that's just something to kind of look out for and scan through those ingredient statements to make sure there's no may contain or processed in statements uh, for a particular recipe. Uh, and then I'm gonna put some plugs in throughout to contact me. Um, I do have uh, some handouts for allergen solutions and custom meal request procedures and gluten solution and custom meal request procedures that have a lot of additional information in for students on eating safely on campus. Uh, so again, if you haven't already, please contact me so I can get this information out to you. All right, next slide. So a program we started last year and, and has been very, very successful is our Allergy Captain Program. So this program provides our managers with a really robust training and, and resources regarding food allergies, and I should say, and, and intolerances. Um, uh, and then throughout the semester, it provides them with ongoing training, education, uh, and updates uh, regarding menu changes or, or what have you. Um, the program also includes education for our frontline associates on food allergies, intolerances, and cross contact. Um, so this, the allergen captains, there should always be an allergen captain assigned every shift and they will be wearing this purple allergen captain hat. Uh, so they're easy to identify. Uh, most of our managers though have gone through this training and will be able to answer questions. So if um, a student cannot find the allergy captain, they can ask another manager 
and either be referred to the allergy captain or that manager should be able to answer questions as well. Um, and on top of this, just a, a little add in, we do require all of our managers to go through Allertrain training. So many of our managers have been double trained through the Allergen Captain program and the Allertrain program. Okay, next slide. One of the big asks that we have is that a student um, has a question regarding food preparation and ingredients during meal service that they should direct the question to the allergen captain or the manager on duty uh, to get correct information and accurate information. Uh, we can pull ingredient labels for them. We can discuss how things have been prepared, how things have been prepped, how they've been processed uh, to ensure that the students have all the information they need to make a safe decision. Okay, next. All right, so this is new this fall, and I'm really very excited about our new stock epinephrine program. Uh, the Delaware Code now uh, approves access to epinephrine auto injectors in institutions of higher education. So that means us. Um, we are going to be bringing in stock epinephrine at all three dining halls, Caesar Rodney, Penn Cater, and Russell. And then we're also going to be bringing it into Perkin and Perkins and Tremont Food Court starting this fall. Um, all of the managers are going to be completing an approved anaphylaxis training program, which will allow them to administer epinephrine in case of an emergency. So we will be getting two different kinds of um, containers. We'll be getting the case, which you see on the far left, uh, which will be kept in the kitchens in the manager's office. And then we will be getting in the three dining halls, uh, additionally, the emergency kit um, wall-mounted case that will be locked but it does have an emergency hammer available to get in um, immediately if we need to. Um, and then um, our managers have known for a very long time, um, appropriate emergency medical service units will be notified promptly. Uh, so we will, you know, we will call for assistance as well as have the epinephrine available for students should they need it. Okay, next. So this is just a little bit of student awareness. Um, before students come to campus to become familiar with foods that commonly contain your food allergens. I just put a, th a few examples up here. Uh, Wor Worcestershire sauce contains anchovies or fish, um, may not be used at home when mom or dad or aunt or whoever is, is cooking, uh, but it is commonly used in meatloaf stews and casseroles. So students may not be familiar with our um, looking for fish in, in a meatloaf, but they should check the ingredient and allergen statements to make sure um, that things, if things are made differently here than they are made at home. Uh, Caesar salad dressing also contains anchovies, which are a fish uh, that may be used in some specialty salads and wraps. Um, Asian sauces may contain a variety of allergens, including fish and oysters, sesame, soy, and wheat. So we do have uh, some really nice um, gluten-free sauces as well as um, gluten-free uh, soy sauce. Um, fish sauce is sometimes used in Asian dishes as well, especially Thai, Vietnamese, and Korean. And we do use fresh, uh, we do use local bakeries who will uh, prepare fresh, fresh baked products for us, spreads, rolls, and bagels. And there is a really high chance of cross contact with sesame seeds with these particular products. So just as a warning for students. Okay, next slide. All right, so last semester, I just started sending out allergy tips to the students. Uh, so I included five of them here, the five that I thought were really important. Um, I want to encourage students with food allergies to always carry their epinephrine auto injector with them, uh, in addition to any other medication recommended by their physician that may be something like a Benadryl. Um, in the event of an allergic reaction, whether they might be in the dining hall with friends at a restaurant, at a party, uh, this will give them quick access to their emergency supply. Um, it is important that they stay in place and get immediate assistance. Physical activity like running back to their room to get their EpiPen or getting their Benadryl can increase the severity of the allergic reaction. So if they have those medications on them, uh, that will make it much easier to access, much quicker to access. Um, and again, our dining staff has been trained to call for emergency assistance in the event of an allergic reaction. So if a student feels as though they are having a reaction while they're dining with us, um, they can just speak to any of our staff 
and staff will get a manager will call for help and again we'll have the stock epi if we if we need to have that okay. next tip all right this is regarding the epinephrine the epipens or the auto cues um occur, again encouraging students to check their expiration dates to make sure that they are not expired uh, the medication is guaranteed to work as expected through the expiration date if it's stored under recommended conditions, meaning no high heat conditions, those kinds of things. Um, they are not guaranteed after the expiration date. So uh, before students come to campus, if they can check and make sure that they have their uh, medication, their epinephrine pens um, that are not expired, uh, liquid medication like the epinephrine breaks down faster and has a higher chance of not working um, past the, the expiration date. So it's not like taking a capsule or a pill. Um, they do break down a little bit faster. All right, tip number three. All right, um, so foods that are prepared in fryers have a high potential for cross-contact with allergens. Um, things like French fries, onion rings, homemade potato chips, chicken nuggets, chicken tenders. So that's something to be aware of. Um, Products that contain milk, egg, wheat, gluten, soy, sesame, fish, shellfish are all prepared in the fryers. Um, so again, those proteins can get into the oil. Um, it is not destroyed by the high temperature of the oil and remains there and can uh, cause cross contact with other foods. Uh, so these foods can actually be requested on the customer request form and we can prepare them in the oven, all except, except for the homemade potato chips. Um, so we can prepare a lot of things in the oven for students. Um, and we do have regular potato chips available if a student were to, were to want them. Okay, tip number four. All right, so this kind of goes back to, um, I guess the, uh, the EpiPen a little bit. Um, encourage students to talk to their new friends and their roommates about their food allergies. Um, it would be great if, if your friend group and your roommates do know that you have a food allergy. Uh, let them know where you store your epinephrine auto injector so they can help in an emergency. Backpacks might have, you know, eight different pockets. Is it in your purse? Is it in your backpack? It is in the pocket of your jacket. So let them know where you store your epinephrine pen so that you can, um, they can help you or have easy access. Um, and then also let them know what the signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction look like. Um, train them how to use, use your epinephrine auto injector. Last year, Student Health Services actually had a training session that students and friends could go to on how to use the um, yeah. epinephrine auto injectors. And again, let them know what to do in the case of an emergency uh, that they do need to call for emergency assistance. All right, last tip number five. All right, so this is again a warning with our bakery items. So all items at the bakery are high risk for cross contact with eggs, milk, soy, wheat, and gluten. Uh, we have taken away the bakery items with peanuts and tree nuts, uh, but there may be some of those items that have the may contain and processed in statements there for peanuts and tree nuts. So again, um, there's just a really high risk area. We do provide individually wrapped desserts uh, that students can request. They're individually wrapped at the manufacturer's level. And so they can, students can add them to their custom meal request form. Uh, most of those um, individually wrapped desserts are made without gluten. Um, so we started serving them for students who had gluten intolerances or celiac, but they are also mostly made without milk, peanuts, tree nuts, and sometimes made without egg. And so they really do encompass a lot of different allergens and provide a nice um, dessert alternative for our students. Um, I do encourage to check labels. Some of them do contain eggs, some might contain milk. Um, so have the students just check the label of the package before they eat that particular product. All right, on to the next slide. All right, so this is kind of a little bit outside of um, allergies and medical restrictions. Uh, but we do have um, a lot of vegetarian and vegan selections. Um, it's really an, an integral part of our, of our menu design and available at every meal. Uh, the vegetarian items may contain milk and or egg product, and the vegan items do not contain milk, egg, or honey. Uh, we do have some dairy alternatives available. We have oat milk, almond, and soy milk available at every meal. And we have pea and rice milk that we can bring in if a student requires it as part of their uh, restriction. 
The other thing we do have available is vegan cheese, sliced or shredded. So that's something that can be added to someone's uh, custom meal request uh, if that's something that, that, that a student likes. Right. Next slide. Okay, so we have a kosher station at Caesar Rodney. Um, it is a full kosher kitchen with a meat uh, kitchen and a dairy kitchen. We have our mashkia, who is our uh, Jewish supervisor, and he oversees the station to ensure uh, that everything is run following all of the Jewish dietary laws. Um, we are OU, and we are OU certified. So. The meat kitchen uh, is open Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, serving meat products. And then on Wednesday, they serve a puri vegetarian option. So at the meat kitchen, there is never any dairy product, and we do not serve fish. So if there is a fish allergy or a milk allergy or a lactose intolerance, this is a really nice quick go-to station as well um, that you can be sure that there are none of your allergens or intolerances there. The uh, the meat and dairy kitchen. Um, of course, with Jewish dietary law, there's never any shellfish, uh, there's never any pork, and since uh, this facility opened, there's never been peanuts or tree nuts um, at that particular station, even though we're now not serving it at any of the other stations. Uh, the dairy kitchen, which is open on Sunday and Friday, there is no meat, uh, so that makes a nice uh, option for vegetarians as well. All right, next slide. So last spring, we opened a halal station at Penn Cater. It's been extremely popular. Um, at that station, we serve only halal certified meat. Uh, there is no pork or pork byproducts. There's no alcohol or food prepared with alcohol. Um, we look at ingredients for enzymes and additives derived from animal products or alcohol to make sure that they are not included in the recipes. Uh, and we do have dedicated smallware, storage, containers, carts, and equipment at that station. Uh, again, it's been uh, extremely popular, and we have, we were very excited to be able to introduce that last spring. Right, next so in our retail locations, we do have pod markets. That stands for provisions on demand. But they're like little mini convenience stores. Um, we carry a large variety of foods that are gluten-free, allergen-friendly, and kosher. So these are all packaged items, as you would expect at a convenience market. And um, and labeled appropriately with allergens um, and ingredients so students can see that. Um, and then at our food courts, um, orders are placed using Grubhub in the food courts. Uh, we started that during COVID. The students don't pay the Grubhub fee that's absorbed by dining services. Um, but if a student does have any dietary restrictions, they can add that into their food order on the instruction line. And then we'll take you know precautions that we need to take to avoid um, restrictive foods from um, being entered into their into their order. All right, next slide. So Plant Forward is our program um, that really is uh, highlighting plant food as the center of the plate. So it's a style of cooking and eating, emphasizing healthy plants at the center of the plate. Um, it's always great selections if you're looking for healthy foods. Uh, again, focusing on vegetables, whole grains, legumes, uh, fruits, while reduce, reducing the amount of meat that that uh, people are consuming. This is actually, um, you know, good for you, good for the planet. So looking for those plant forward signs um, is a great idea. Next. All right, cool food meals we just introduced last year. So this is something that I'm very excited about. Uh, this is what the icon looks like for the cool food meals. It's low carbon certified. Um, so these foods have a lower carbon footprint than the average North American meal. Uh, the recipes are analyzed and approved by the World Resource Institution. Uh, in addition, they do meet approved nutrition safeguard ratings. So not only are they good for the planet, but they uh, do have to have a higher nutrition rating. Um, and it's again, it's just a simple, delicious, nutritious, nutritious way to help the planet and have some um, higher nutrient dense foods in, in your diet. All right, so that is the end of my presentation. I am putting up my contact information again. Um, and why to contact me, you will receive additional detailed information on how to dine safely on campus.
If you have a gluten restriction, you will be put on the list to receive the gluten solution menus every week. Um, and if you have uh, dietary restrictions that are outside the parameter of the program that I just described, uh, we definitely need to talk to you, want to talk to you so that we can accommodate uh, your dietary restrictions and make sure that you have some nice, well-balanced meals. Uh, with that, we're gonna open it up to questions. We do have the question answer box available. So if you have any questions, let me know. Right. If we don't have any questions, we can, can oh, we do, I'm sorry. Hold on a second. Hey, Debbie, I have the Q&A open. I can ask you okay. a question. Okay, I yeah. just opened it. Thank you. Okay, no, I'll no let problem. you ask. Yeah. Nope, whatever you feel like is comfortable for you. Okay, I'll go through you. All right. So the first question is, if I have celiac, do I need to fill out a custom meal plan? Um, that depends on what you want to eat for that particular meal. If you are at one of the two dining halls that has the True Balance Station, and you look at the menu and you like what we're serving, then you can just walk in and that food will be ready and available for you. Um, if you don't like what we're serving or decide you want something different that day, then we would ask that you fill out the custom meal request form and submit it so that we can prepare that for you. So it really depends on what you're looking for for that particular meal. Perfect. The next question is, um, you kind of talked about this at the beginning, but are custom meals available to students who are able to eat from the true balance menu? Yes. Yes, because, um, you know, sometimes we might be having a pork product or a beef product and some students may not eat red meat. Um, so we do want you to be able to, students to be able to choose something that they will enjoy. Um, if maybe they're not feeling well, you know, we're, doing, we're serving something that they don't think is going to settle well with their stomach, uh, then definitely, yes, we would prepare something different for them. So uh, they're not locked into true balance. They can always do a custom meal request. Perfect. And that's all we have. We have somebody who just thanked you and said that this was helpful. We have one more question, okay. actually. Um, if I have a peanut allergy, should I be using the custom meal request? Um, I think that's a personal decision that is going to give you some safer, a little bit higher level of safety, but since we are not using peanuts, um, in any of our recipes, um, you know, we're, we're, we're not adding peanuts to, to anything that we're preparing. You would still want to look at the may contain, um, or processed in a facility that processes peanuts online. Um, and you might want to make that decision um, station by station. So if one station is uh, serving something, I know, for example, um, and this is this is actually a tree nut, but the Kalamata olives have a may contain statement for almonds. And so if we're serving Kalamata olives at a station and maybe you really wanted to have that Greek salad, we could prepare that for you individually in a separate area without contact with the Kalamata olives. Uh, but if, we're, if you're looking at another station, 
and it's pizza and there's just nothing with any kind of may contain statements, then that would be safe for you to eat. So I think, you know, looking at the ingredients, becoming familiar um, with what we're serving, asking the allergy captain, uh, calling me, you know, the day before, if you have a question would be, you know, a safe way to go. But you definitely want to look for those may contain and processed in uh, statements, especially if you're highly allergic. Thank you. And our next question, um, how do the nutritional ID cards work? Uh, so we print out the nutrition ID cards um, through university printing, and they are put up right next to the food item uh, that we are serving. So at our classic station, our home zone station, if we're serving, trying to think of that menu, we had the roast turkey and we had the gravy and the mashed potatoes and the peas and the Italian roasted vegetables those four or five cards would be put up right at that station. So when you walk in, uh, those cards would, would be visible. Uh, this semester, that's only gonna be the case at Ken Cater Dining Hall. At Caesar Rodney and Russell Dining Hall, they're gonna have the digital menu boards, which will list the name, the uh, recipe description and the calories. Uh, so that's all that will be displayed, but you can scan the QR code if you need additional information for ingredients and or nutrients. Thank you. So for the next question, um, do you need a custom meal if you are not allergic to anything, but you want to watch your diet and weight? So we do require a physician's note for anybody doing a custom meal. Um, if someone has a, a diagnosis um, and a medically prescribed weight loss diet uh, from a physician, then I will talk to that student and see what we can do to, to accommodate that recommendation from the physician. Uh, we have so many selections in the dining hall. Uh, Cesar Rodney, for example, has 15 different stations. Um, so it really, we really can accommodate a lot of um, dietary preferences or restrictions without the custom meals. Again, just because we have so many different selections available. Um, but again, you know, we would definitely look at that individual student and, and work, work with them and maybe some education on what options we have available. Um, if there's a few things that they need in addition with the doctor's recommendation, we can look at that. So I would encourage that person to call me or email me. All right, okay. I'm not seeing any more questions. We'll give it a couple more minutes, folks. All right, we have one come in. Um, when choosing a dining plan, do custom meals work with points and meal swipes? So with the custom meals, they are available in the dining halls. So that would be available using a meal swipe. Um, if you are using, if you are on the 14 weekly meal plan and you need a 15th meal, you can use points to get back into the dining hall using points or using one of your guest passes. But um, but they're specifically a meal swipe for the dining hall, unless again, you, you've run out, which is unusual. And then you can use your points. Right, not seeing any more questions. Gonna once again, give it a minute or so to see if anybody's thinking about anything or want to ask anything. I'm gonna just add something that came to mind. Um, yep. A question that I get uh, every now and again, there is no additional cost um, to get the gluten-free foods or, uh, you know, accommodations or custom meals. So that is all, you know, part of your uh, meal plan price with no additional cost. Right. Not seeing any more questions. Um, another question. So can we get a copy of this PowerPoint? Yes, I believe this presentation is going to be on the University Hub, but if you email me, I can send you a copy of the PowerPoint. Yep. We will be posting, um, to, re to reiterate, we will be posting this on the Blue Hint Family Hub um, under the same event tab that you all clicked on this um, presentation for. So I'll be sure to edit that once we get that information. Any other questions, folks? Hoping to see a lot of new emails in my inbox tomorrow morning. 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> We got to thank you. It seems like we are good to go. Well, thank you everybody for joining us tonight. I hope you uh, learned a lot. And again, um, call me or email me if you have any additional questions or if we need to make uh, some you know, different arrangements. Thank you folks. Have a wonderful night. Thank you.